I'm anointed by God to teach the Word. I'm His child. I'm called by God. And God's anointing gives me the authority that I need to do what I'm doing. You a lie. You a lie. God ain't never told a woman to do something that contradicts that Bible. That's right. Never. Don't get on social media and say something bad about somebody else. You don't even need to give your opinion about somebody else on social media. When a woman says she's a preacher, you a liar! That's a lie. Every woman that says God called and sent her to preach the gospel, Joyce Myers, that goes Joyce you. There's something wrong, deeply wrong, inside somebody when they have to say something like that, especially with that kind of a tone. And when you start hearing that kind of stuff from Christians, that's a good indication from somebody that you don't want to spend a lot of time with and you need to get away from. Joyce Mayer has vigorously defended her belief that she is called by God to preach the gospel, standing firm even in the face of opposition from Gino Jennings, who has repeatedly preached that women are not ordained by God to serve in such roles. In a passionate response to Jennings' messages, Maya made it clear that she would not back down from her convictions. She emphasized that her calling was not based on human interpretations or opinions, but on a profound divine encounter in which she felt God speaking directly to her heart, affirming her mission to spread his word. Despite the criticism, Maya has remained steadfast, believing that her role in ministry is a direct mandate from God. You know, people ask all the time, how do you know when God is calling you to do something? And it may sound like a, a lame answer, but you just know. I mean, you know. It's like God puts such a strong desire in your heart. With unwavering determination, Joyce Mayer declared that she would continue to preach the gospel with zeal and commitment, despite all opposition. Gino Jennings, a staunch critic of women in the ministry, has consistently preached against Maya and others like her, using scripture to argue that women are not called by God to preach. He frequently criticized Maya for her role as a preacher, insisting that women should not hold such positions. In response, Maya took deep offense at Jennings' stance, finding his views hurtful, especially given her personal belief that God had called her to preach. She viewed Jennings' teachings as not only belittling her experiences, but also undermining the valuable contributions of women in the ministry worldwide. Mia believes Jennings' views reflect a broader tension within Christianity about gender roles in ministry, an outdated and restrictive view that fails to recognize the diverse gifts and callings that women can bring to the church. For her, her ministry is a testament to God's grace and she firmly believes that her message of hope and empowerment transcends gender barriers. In a previous interview, Maya also shared that in her early years of teaching, she faced rejection from family and friends in her church because they did not believe that women were called to preach, leaving her feeling estranged from those closest to her. I mean, every time when God was calling me into ministry, I was rejected by family and friends at that time. And I mean, rejected like, if you're gonna do that, then we can't have anything else to do with you. Wow. Because they really didn't feel like that a woman being in ministry was correct. And, and it was a group of church friends, mm -hmm. which makes it even harder. And it can, it can confuse you too, because you think, well, am I right? Am I hearing from God? Or am I really making a big mistake? In another interview, she recounted how her former pastor approached her and her husband, expressing that her husband should be the one teaching and not her. When I started it, I wasn't even cognizant of the fact that women didn't normally do that. I mean, I was just so caught up in what I felt like God was telling me to do, and it was being successful. And, you know, I always teasing, I say, I didn't know women couldn't teach till people started telling me <laughs> that they couldn't. Right. And so in this church that we were going to, they felt like that I wasn't supposed to be teaching, that Dave should be. Mm -hmm. Teaching. I remember going out of the church one Sunday and the pastor looking at Dave and he said, Brother, you should be teaching that Bible study, not your wife. Joyce Mayer's husband shared that he had tried to follow the advice he had received about pursuing ministry, but quickly realized that it was not his calling. Despite his efforts, he felt that preaching was not the path for him. Instead, he openly acknowledged Joyce as someone who was truly blessed with the gift of teaching, recognizing her natural ability and spiritual calling to preach and share the gospel. His support for her role in ministry 
reflected both his respect for her calling and his understanding that each person has different gifts and purposes. At the same time, him saying it, I'm, I, I'm thinking, uh, you know, that, you know, why did God not give me the gift? Why did he give it to her? You know, and so I've got that in me a little bit. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'm going to do it. You know, and so I, I tried and it didn't work. Just I didn't have the ability to teach. From the very beginning, she had the gift to teach and I recognize. Gino Jennings has been a vocal opponent of women serving as preachers, basing his position on specific biblical verses. He frequently cites passages from the New Testament to support his arguments, with one of the key verses being John 3.34. Jennings interprets this verse along with others to assert that God has not called women to preach the gospel. His teachings emphasize strict adherence to what he believes to be biblical guidelines regarding gender roles in ministry, which has led him to criticize prominent female preachers who claim to have a divine calling, including Joyce Mayer. You better give me John. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 3, and begin at verse 34. At verse 34. Uh, for he. For she. For he. She. He. H E. <laughs> What did the Holy Ghost say? For he, he whom God, whom God hath sent, hath sent, speaketh the words of God. God don't send women to preach. Gino Jennings argues that the Bible supports the idea that only men are called by God to preach, pointing to specific scriptures to reinforce his belief. One such verse uses the pronoun he to refer to those whom God sends to speak his words which Jennings interprets as evidence that God specifically calls men, not women, to deliver his message. This interpretation aligns with the traditional view held by many denominations, where women are not permitted to hold leadership roles such as preaching, which are reserved exclusively for men. Jennings also frequently references another scripture, 1 Timothy, to further emphasize his position on the issue. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. I suffer. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. There's any women preachers here? Sit down. That's right. Well, I know what God told me. You a lie. You a lie. God ain't never told a woman to do something that contradict that Bible. That's right. Uh -huh. Never. That's right. According to certain interpretations of the Bible, specific verses, including this one, suggest that women should learn in silence and submit to male authority within the church. These scriptures are often cited to support the belief that women should not assume roles of teaching or leadership in re leadership in religious settings, as those responsibilities are considered to be reserved for men. This traditional perspective reinforces the idea that men are divinely appointed to lead and preach, while women are expected to take on more supportive roles within the church community. A critical person is proud. A fault-finding person is proud. A harsh person, somebody who's just hard on people, who's legalistic and has too many rules and regulations about the way they want everything done. Gino Jennings teaches that God has ordained a specific order within the church, with men designated as spiritual leaders and women in supportive roles. He believes this hierarchy reflects the divine structure established by God, citing the example of Jesus and the apostles, all of whom were men, to emphasize that men were appointed to lead the early church. According to Jennings, Allowing women to preach contradicts biblical teachings and disrupts the God, given order for the church. While he acknowledges that women can serve in other capacities, preaching is reserved exclusively for men. In contrast, Joyce Mayer challenges Jennings' interpretation, viewing it as overly rigid and dismissive of the broader biblical messages of equality and inclusion. Despite the scriptural challenges to her role, Mayer continues to stand by her calling, though critics argue that her focus on success and prosperity may prioritize financial gain over biblical principles. This ongoing debate raises important questions about the interpretation of scripture, the integrity of Christian leadership, and the motivations behind ministry work, with Mayer's decision to continue preaching despite opposition, serving as a focal point for larger discussions on faith and biblical adherence. Is Joyce Mayer or Gino Jennings right?
Let us know what you think in the comments section of the video. Don't forget to like and hit the channel notifications to stay up to date with our latest videos. Thank you for watching until the end. Have a great day and see you in our next video.